Hello all. Welcome to our very first episode of Building Better Tomorrow series. And our topic for today is designing an accessible world through innovation. I am Shilpa Rao and my pronouns are she, her and hers and I'm your host for today. World Bank data states that 1 billion people, which is almost 15% of the world's population, experience some form of disability. And this number is expected to reach almost 2 billion by 2050. So how can we make a difference? And that's what we're going to talk about today. We have curated an inspiring session with leading organizations to explore the latest innovation and how they're integrating technology and accessibility into their products and services across industries. So before I invite the panelists, I would like to invite Madhumita for a quick forward. Madhumita is our senior partner at Business Unit Head for the Business Transformation Group at TCS. She has over two decades of global consulting experience driving technology-led business transformation across several industries. Madhumita is an expert in execution of complex global transformation initiatives across Fortune 500 companies, and she is passionate about innovation and human potential with a special focus on diversity and inclusion initiatives. So welcome, Madhumita. Over to you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Shilpa, and really have been looking forward to this wonderful session for making an impact, right? And we at TCS, we believe in our values, which we call LIRAL. The first L stands for leading change. So as Shilpa just now said, by 2050, it will be about 15% of world's population who will be facing dis disabilities in some form or the other, right? So this is the right time to lead the change, to get together with one and all, to try and see that if we can create more equitable workspace through more and more inclusive design. And that's why this panel discussion today to create a lot more awareness, right? So together with all of you, with our clients, with our panelists here, we are going to discuss today that how we can lead the change together. As you all know, UN has declared December 3rd as the day for people with disabilities. And that's when we had started off a series of events, right? Dr. Charu, who heads our accessibility center of excellence, he had kicked off this entire series by giving us key messages on how we all can come together to make this impact. Subsequent to that, we all got together to visit a blind school. And believe me, seeing is believing, seeing is pledging, seeing is committing more and more that this is the journey which needs to start now and right now. So with that little note, Shilpa, over to you. Looking forward to a wonderfully impactful session today. Thank you. Thank you, Madhumita, for energizing us. So coming to our panel uh, today, uh, for our first panelist, we have Erica Moller. Erica leads accessibility program for cloud and the AI division at Microsoft, covering a broad range of business development and cloud-based technologies. Uh, she's responsible for building durable and scalable accessibility program to raise the bar on accessibility across 700 products, websites, and others. She believes that disability is a strength and is focused on bringing accessibility to the forefront of product design, development, and culture. It's a pleasure to have you with us today, Erica. Our next panelist is Dr. Charudatta Jadha. He heads the TCS Accessibility and Inclusive Design Research and Innovation Unit. He has over 30 years of experience and he's passionate about technologies that drive 
market making innovations and positive impact to the old world he is an advisory board member and member of working groups for many national and international bodies he has filed dozen of patents he has published various papers and he is a guest at several global conferences uh, in fact dr charu has represented india six times in the world chess championship and olympiads for the blind he has received several awards but to name a few uh, the national award for the best disabled employee and this was given to him by our ex president uh, dr apg abdul kalam super id godfrey phillips award times now amazing indian helen keller award and lot of other awards it's a pleasure to have you with us dr charu thank you shilpa pleasure to be part of this esteem panel next on the panel we have satish gokhale he is the owner of design directions private limited he has graduated from national institute of design popular known as nid and is founding member of association of designers of india he has received several awards including design of the decade award for the low cost water filter tata swatch and lexus design awards across many years he has recently received the red dot award in germany and g mark in japan for designing solar based computing device mobiles satish has successfully designed and launched over 700 products in both indian and international markets welcome satish pleasure to have you with us today so i'm really excited with this esteemed panel that we have today and let's start with our first question uh, and the first topic with you erica so uh, erica you have been pivotal in enabling accessibility in microsoft so could you share you know your definition of accessibility and vision of microsoft in this area yeah absolutely thanks shilpa and dr charu and satish it's it's great to be here with you today so uh so what is the definition of accessibility so i mean uh, i'm sure there's something formal out there but i look at accessibility to really be about empowerment and about enablement and removing barriers so that everyone can experience um, the products, websites, tools, experience, all of this in uh, an equal and equitable fashion. Um, when, I, when I think about accessibility, there's, uh, we're thinking about the usability of products. We're thinking about customers and the way that they experience, leaning into different perspectives and really learning about these different ways that might be unexpected and might be different from that typical behavior and leaning in into how we can make the right products and the right features that really empower and enable them and uh so the vision for accessibility so microsoft's mission state statement is to empower every individual and every organization on the planet to achieve more and you know just using the definition of accessibility you know this ties right in uh, microsoft's chief accessibility officer jenny lay fleury has uh provided um a commitment to double down on accessibility and really the next steps uh to expand accessibility across technology across the workforce and across the workplace so what does that really mean uh for technology that's about building products with accessibility in mind, as we talked about. Uh, one of the great examples is the Office ecosystem. There's tons of great accessibility features there. Uh, one of the key ones is the built-in accessibility checker that helps to make sure all of the documents and content that you create within the Office ecosystem is accessible and everyone is able to consume it. Um, within the Teams platform, there is now live captioning, so everyone is able to equally follow along to what's happening in critical business meetings. And as well, there's PowerPoint Live so that everyone is able to equally access the content that's being discussed. With this accessible technology, we're able to create opportunities for more people to enter the workforce. Microsoft has some really great 
on uh, products like LinkedIn, like the Microsoft Learn and Documentation Platform, and GitHub that can really help to bring more opportunities to, to everyone. And finally, Microsoft is committed to a workplace that empowers everyone. There's lots of different ways that this is being accomplished. Um, one of the great ways is through ERGs or employee resource groups that helps to build a community of people with disabilities to learn best practices and to discuss, uh, basically make the workplace more equitable for everyone. Um, there's groups of people that are working on more accommodations. One of the latest and greatest that Microsoft is supporting in terms of benefits is having a visual assistant for people uh, with visual impairments so that if they do um, hit any issues um, or, uh, for example, putting together anything that has visual requirements, that this is now easier. And then also inclusive hiring to make sure that the wor workforce at Microsoft um, brings in the diverse and unique perspectives so that we can really build and innovate and create the technology of tomorrow. Thank you, Erica. Accessibility is empowerment, so that kind of sums it up. Thank you so much for those insights and cool features which Microsoft has. Uh, over to you, <clears throat> Dr. Charu. Uh, looking at accessibility and inclusive design from a, uh, you know, from a practice perspective, and can you share your thoughts on accessibility and your vision for your group? Uh, accessibility. Uh... Uh, is a need of ours. It's, we strongly believe uh, in, in this statement. And uh, we um, aim at creating the, uh, the capabilities inside TCS uh, to deliver digital services, maybe product solutions, assistive technology, which can empower people with disabilities, and integrate accessibility into DNA of the organization. So we, we strongly believe that accessibility is creating, developing, or producing everything around us, which can be form of and, and, and product solution services or an environment which could be accessible or inclusive by design. So we started our journey with a motto of inclusion without exception, and we have set the vision to collaborate with each and every partner and stakeholder to create inclusion, inclusive and equitable world around us. So that is what um, we basically um, has um, uh, uh, lived at uh, uh, and uh, celebrated or enjoyed our work, creating uh, the, the, the diverse capabilities across the value chain of accessibility with research and innovation of center of it. Thank you, Dr. Charu. And you summed it really well, where you're saying, leave no one out, so inclusive for everyone, no one, no exception there. So thank you so much for that view. Uh, over to you, Satish. Uh, Satish, you're focused on the anthropomorphic side of accessibility, which is more the physical side of accessibility. So can you share your view on the same? Sure. Thank, thank you, Shilpa. So uh, I think we all acknowledge that accessibility is a global issue. And we, as designers and engineers and everybody, have to look into this. So basically, uh, what we feel is we need to address several types of accessibility. It's not just one or two, but you know things like uh, color blindness or total visual impairment, motor neuron disorders or basic mobility issues. Uh, partial or total hearing impairment and also cognitive disabilities. I think that's also equally important, which normally gets neglected quite a lot. And, you know, designers here have a very important role to play, is what we strongly believe in. You know, we, as designers, we always try and put ourselves in the shoes of physically challenged persons to understand and experience their real problems, day-to-day -day problems as well. And we invariably try and attempt to create universal design for even the simplest daily use products. It could be as simple as a toothbrush. And, you know, as we also think of numerous ways 
how people can use the product very wrongly. So I think that gives us a lot of insights. Thank you, Satish. I mean, those are very interesting examples. Those are like day to day examples which we all experience. So thank you so much for uh, sharing those. So uh, coming back to you, Erica, I mean, you talked about uh, Microsoft vision of empowering every individual. Uh, now, from that perspective, can you uh, give some examples of uh, things which Microsoft is doing to enhance the quality of life of a person with disability? Yeah, so um, probably the biggest example I can think of is something called the Seeing AI app, um, mm -hmm. which is actually an innovation that was created um, by a Microsoft employee uh, who was visually impaired in the U uh, in the UK. And really, his his vision was how can we how can we use the the uh, developing technologies in Microsoft um, with AI and really be able to use this to see the world around me. And so uh, the Seeing AI app is on iOS and it has tons of great capabilities um, that visually impaired people or and everyone, uh, I sometimes pull it out as well, can use to, to understand the world. So a few examples of this would be, for example, there is a uh, sign uh, in front of you. Uh, maybe it's a stop sign. You're walking down the street. Uh, the Seeing AI hat can help to read that aloud. You can uh, point your phone around and it will identify that text and be able to make it so everyone can, can understand it. Um, there's a, a product scanning functionality. For example, say you're in the grocery store um, and you're picking out um, a new product. Uh, it will help you uh, find where the barcode is and be able to scan it and help you understand what that product is. Um, and also, uh, this was really interesting. Last week, my team and I, we went to the Seattle, or I'm in Seattle, uh, Seattle Lighthouse for the Blind and took a tour of their facility. Um, and on this tour, they pulled out the Seeing AI app and they used the people feature. And they used this actually on us. Um, and they scanned the room, um, used the app to identify a person, and basically um, uh, this feature can help to identify emotions. It can help to give uh, descriptions of people, and I, I think it spit out something around uh, in uh, a 40-year-old man with dark hair, um, basically a visual description of the person in front of them. So it was really exciting to see the app being used in real life. Thank you, Erica. I mean, it's it's always so thrilling to see something that you have been part of and being used and actually giving results. It's always so satisfying. So uh, thank you so much for sharing that inspirational story. Uh, over to you, uh, Dr. Charu. Uh, can you share some examples uh, from your clients where you're innovating and helping them to drive accessibility? Uh, yes, so um, as I said that um, um, all capabilities, um, um, what we created is powered by our research and uh, our focus was um, to, to elevate accessibility beyond compliance and create the value um, to, uh, to, to our customers. So we work with our customers as a partner to um, drive accessibility agenda as a business transformation and sustainability. And all our offerings or capabilities which we have created around, around this is enabling us and our customers to leverage the value, untapped value which this domain has to, to transform the businesses and the lives of people with disability. For example, today the digital services are integral part of our life. Pro and they provided if we make those services accessible to people with disability, we will always create a digital divide. So our automation capability in, in, in all channel accessibilities like web mobile, which not only an automation and optimize the accessibility implementation, 
but it has empowered the, 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 the stakeholders involved in product development life cycle. So the, 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 we have used technology not only to automate the, the activities uh, in, in assessment, development, or in some cases empowering the, the designers, but we have basically given the, uh, the, the power in hands of the, the product developers um, um, uh, uh, with this automation, minimizing the dependency on the new skill set. So even the bot which we have created is basically a companion uh, the playing the role of SME, um, uh, which has basically built, uh, 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 has helped uh, the, the project teams to implement accessibility uh, uh, seamlessly in the project. Similarly, we also created very comprehensive capabilities in the content accessibility. Our vision was is to, 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 to integrate accessibility in the root of content creation itself, instead of you know uh, uh, making the documents or PDF accessible, so that is what the journey we started, and we have very comprehensive capability of you know converting the content into accessible form, not only in accessible PDF but EPUB3, DAISY, DAISY text, text audio, as well as Braille. So all these this this uh, this this capabilities has helped us to to deliver the digital accessibility services to our customers. Then the second area where we have, um, you know, um, um, uh, invested a lot of our time and energy uh, um, uh, in conducting research to, to empower our employees. So, so that the the uh, the the innovation like uh, the the smart glass, um, which helps uh, uh, the visually challenged person to read the print content or handwritten text in an office environment and even in in, in uh, academic in, uh, environment. This this particular uh, innovation helps the, the blind person to recognize who is around him and also basically help him to get the emotions of that person before he even start interacting with that person. The same innovation helps in uh, knowing what is around him so he can basically um, um, move around in his office environment um, um, uh, with a greater a greater ease. So there are several such uh, such um, use cases which we have built, uh, uh, which has helped people with visually challenge uh, uh, to to get uh, the the uh, the, the uh, uh, um, equitable environment in the in office environment. Similarly, um, a person with hearing difficulty uh, in solving their communication challenge, we have created OmniChat and sign language interpreter, the solutions which um, uh, converts the uh, the uh, the audio to text uh, back and text to audio. And sign language to audio, uh, uh, audio, which which can be you know uh, uh, um, help uh, uh, people with uh, uh, hearing difficulties to to um, uh, uh, participate and communicate with their colleagues one to one in group discussion, and this technology could be integrated into into channels, so they could they will also get and uh, digital services, indoor navigation as we know that GPS is uh, uh, is is. Uh, uh, Having its own limitations in, inside the, uh, the the control environment, so we have come up with an indoor navigation, uh, indoor positioning system, using computer vision and AR. So there is no IoT involved. So such such best capabilities as 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 help um, um, our employees uh, 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 to overcome their physical limitations and participate um, in their professional. Um, uh, 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 environment uh, and take responsibilities uh, and uh, at equal level, and we extend those those all those capabilities as an inclusive workspace solution uh, to, uh, to to our uh, customer. And uh, uh, similarly, um, uh, they, we have created uh, several assistive technologies, especially in the space of um, uh, neurodiversity. So we have assisto, we have um, uh, the prana uh, kind of technology created by our rapid lab. Um, uh, we're to, to solving this very specific problem uh, for uh, 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 neuro disability. We also created, uh, got into the futuristic research uh, using brain signals, uh, the, uh, the, the vision uh, to create and multimodal interfaces. And um, um, uh, 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 there are two very ambitious uh, projects which we are currently working on. Um, uh, uh, is One is uh, 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 creating the uh, the the uh, the standards for uh, voice uh, uh, interfaces, uh, uh, accessibility standards for voice interfaces. As we know that uh, uh, the um, uh, the the voice modality is getting momentum. We see more and more usage uh, usage of voice uh, for deliver delivering services. But how to deliver accessible voice is in white space today. 
So um, we work with British Standard Institute and our academic partner um, RCA uh, in developing this standard. And very soon we will be, uh, you know, publishing these standards with the British Standard Institute. And uh, metaverse, we strongly believe that you know metaverse um, uh, is 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 uh, is going to transform um, uh, the uh, uh, the way uh, uh, the people with disability is going to interact with technology. It has its own strengths, uh, which could uh, could um, yeah, make a big difference. Uh, but creating an inclusive metaverse is is again um, uh, a big uh, 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 white space today. So we are also getting into those research. Uh, creating our futuristic uh, capabilities into this space. See, all in all, all the 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 uh, the across value chain, we have basically got into research and created those capabilities to to work with our customers and stakeholders to 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 drive their activity agenda and also create a social impact to make a difference in the lives of people with disability. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sharu. These were like excellent examples and. Uh, very interesting in terms of technology enabling technology to become more accessible so that uh, you know uh, people with disabilities have a uh, quality of life be it at workplace be it uh, you know everywhere else so thank you so much for sharing these very interesting examples on how we are partnering with our clients with uh, innovation research and all the things that we offer to uh, drive this agenda so thank you so much for sharing uh, next question for you, Satish. Uh, Satish, you have designed award-winning products and you have made them accessible too. So can you share some of uh, the examples uh, with our audience today? So since I do uh, more work in uh, physical domain, physical products, I'm actually going to showcase two products and I will talk about two products uh, very quickly. So just about three years back, unfortunately, uh, my sister-in-law, was uh, detected with ALS. And as a result, she, you know, her hands had clawed, so she couldn't eat. So, I, you know, the problem was we had to feed her or the caregiver has to feed her for every, and that actually became a problem. So, you know, on the dinner table, we could sense that she was not very happy uh, sitting with us because she had to be fed at that young age. So we created a product called Shreyasa Dignity Dinner Way. And I don't know whether you can see this product. Uh, typically in India, we as we use stainless steel, we've also created it in stainless steel. The beauty of this is, I know, uh, when you're eating, the entire food, because the trajectory and the angle falls into the spoon. So it becomes a single hand uh, operation. And that becomes very convenient. I don't know, uh, it will be too reflective. And we also have a place where the spoon gets parked because then they can actually put their hand in and start eating. So typically this is one size and we also have a small one which is like a bowl where you can have your soup, dal and yeah, it works wonderfully. You can dishwash it. Uh, typically in India, we use stainless steel a lot, but we are also creating products uh, in stoneware. This is completely stoneware and ceramic. But the philosophy, the design language will still remain the same. Uh, and again, affordability. So you know, if you can even afford, we've created an entire range in silverware as well. This is silver. And we have typically the hand-beaten Indian toka uh, texture. You know, this is completely handmade kind of uh, product. Looks beautiful. So, you know, suddenly we realized there was a smile on my sister-in-law's face while she was eating. And that itself was quite a lot for us, I think, as designers. Then, coming to the second product, we've designed an inhaler for a very leading uh, company in India, it's one of the largest uh, pharmaceutical companies. And this is a 60-dose dry powder inhaler. So you and me can see. Uh, it actually shows you the number of doses left. Obviously, in this camera, you will not be able to see. It's also got a magnifying lens. So it has a countdown from 60 to 59 to 58 till zero. But what if I'm visually impaired? How do I know that uh, the doses are getting over? So this is at the back. I don't know. Uh, I'll just get a pencil. Can you see a small button right here? So this currently is completely flat. And because it's got 39 doses left, 
But the minute all the doses get over 60 doses, the last eight doses, a small rail button pops up. Uh, I've highlighted that in black. I think this is coordination issue because I'm seeing myself here. So, you know, a visually impaired person can feel a small projection here. So he definitely knows that he, only eight doses are left and he has to buy it the right and key. So this is a, a physical signal to him. And once this button pops out, it never goes in. So, you know, so he, he knows that he has to buy a device. So th these had a lot of mechanical challenges. Another beauty of this is for a visually impaired person or slight disabilities, this is the only product in dry powder inhaler space which has three user steps. It's only open, inhale, and shut. Unlike other things where you have to remove the cap, then the cap falls off, or you don't know where the cap is kept, then you have to press a button, puncture the blister inside, then inhale, then put the cap back. And this also becomes a completely single hand uh, activity. So that's another very important feature. So there are a lot of patents on this product, and this is for a very renowned client in India. We've also just completed a, a digital inhaler, which actually gives you, shows you a digital readout as to how many doses. It's, it's a countdown uh, LCD display. So from 210, so on until zero. But the last 25 doses are red LED blinks, but it also gives the audio. And, uh, you know, then it also starts giving the audio feedback from that so many doses are left. That's an important feature. And I, I believe that disability is not just a measure of physical thing, but it could be simple things like a person who uses the right hand and a person who uses his left hand. That actually can create a lot of problems in uh, usage of products or, or while using products. So about 20 years back, I'm talking uh, two decades, we designed a product, uh, this is an ultrasound uh, color, uh, color Doppler, where globally all our competition had a trackball and three buttons on the left. So a right-handed radiologist can work with it comfortably. So when you're talking of diagnosis and you're looking at scanning a very, very uh, critical area, you can't afford to make mistakes. And my question to the client is, what happens if I'm a left-handed radiologist? They actually looked at each other and they didn't realize what to then answer me. And that's when we gave birth to the world's first ambidextrous ultrasound machine. So, you know, as a doctor, if I say I'm a right-handed user, it will disable the three uh, press buttons for recording the frame through software. I think we Indians are brilliant in software and uh, that's how it goes. But more importantly, it's not just for, uh, you know, people with disability. But one should also take care of the caregivers. I think normally they're neglected. So if your products are good, even the caregivers actually find it very comfortable to use. Thank you. Thank you, Satish. And these were super interesting products and they were super simple and at the same time really, really thoughtfully designed. So thank you so much for sharing. And in fact, I'm a messy eater, so I'm going to use that plate definitely. So thank you so much for sharing that. It is just getting into production uh, in the next 15 days. Oh, awesome. awesome. With a very renowned uh, manufacturer uh, in India. And luckily, I think one more very important thing is my client has decided to present 1,000 sets to people with Parkinson's and ALS. So I was very happy with this. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, coming, talking about innovations and uh, coming to you, Erica, uh, can you describe or help understand the process of how innovation happens? Because a lot of these features, a lot of these, uh, you know, designs which have to be incorporated, uh, you know, the, how do these ideas come in and how are these features created at Microsoft? Could you share some insights on those? Yeah, um, great question. So one of the, the key areas that, you know, helps with spurring these different ideas is what we call the hackathon. Uh, hackathon is great, everyone should do it. So what is the hackathon? Um, basically Microsoft dedicates a week where all employees are encouraged to come up with these great ideas. 
Um, so you can either create an idea um, that others can join or, uh, yeah, you join an existing project and help others build out their vision. Um, so within the hackathon, there is a specialized track called Ability Hack. And the ability hack is really that focused area um, for people to think about um, these great accessibility ideas. And so it is from um, these hackathon events that has really spurred a lot of the innovation. Um, probably the latest and the greatest story here is um, something called uh, Windows captioning. Um, this was um, developed by a uh, Microsoft employee with hearing impairments who uh, had this idea that Windows could do more around transcribing the audio that was coming out of the Windows platform. And where are we today? Uh, the, the Windows captioning feature has now shipped with the Windows 11 and something that everyone can enjoy. I love turning on captions. It makes it easier for me to understand. Um, so this is a great new feature and, um, you know, something that came about by um, yeah, having a diverse uh, company with a lot of different perspectives that can bring in these new and fresh ideas that will benefit everyone. Yeah, I love the captions because I mean, I read everything with captions. So thank you so much for that feature. And as you rightly said, like inclusive teams actually create inclusive products. So thanks so much for that share. So uh, over to you, Dr. Charu. Dr. Charu, I've heard a lot about you and your team taking up various social innovation projects in the accessibility area. So could you share uh, some details on those? Uh, uh, yeah, actually, um, as I said, that um, creating inclusive um, um, world around us, uh, 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 supporting um, uh, our customers uh, in their business uh, goals, is not sufficient. Um, we have to basically contribute uh, um, in, uh, uh, to, to the society and societal problems. Uh, so I can highlight uh, two of such innovations, which is very close to 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 to, to my heart, and um, uh, which has uh, created very very big impact. And again, uh, as we uh, strongly believe that you know, uh, 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 one individual or one organization or one country cannot. Uh, you know, bring this change. Uh, we all have to work uh, towards that, and that collaboration is key. So both this innovation is an an, an excellent example of uh, collaboration. So the first one is um, our um, Rapid Lab, um, uh, Rapid Innovation Lab has um, uh, developed several you know uh, neurodiversity um, innovations, but one verbos in collaboration um, with our. Uh, you know, uh, customer in UK based bank Barclays. Um, uh, so, this particular um, uh, 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 solution is a gamification to solve the, the challenges of cerebral palsy. Um, and um, it, uh, it has uh, you know, um, made such a, such a great impact, especially when we started this deploying in the southern part of our, um, uh, our India. Where you know their parents uh, are able to to communicate, um, uh, understand uh, uh, what uh, uh, that person is, uh, is talking about, and this through this gamification we have tried to uh, help him overcoming um, his limitation. It has a long-lasting impact on you know person with cerebral palsy, and this technology has been has been taken forward by our partner um, and customer uh, uh, Barclays. Second, another great example is um, uh, the Access Infinity, which is an accessible digital publishing platform. Um, um, uh, we have partnered with uh, the Daisy Forum of India, which is an uh, entity of 200 plus um, different stakeholders, uh, uh, comes from different disciplines. Um, uh, there are publishers, uh, the universities, uh, the, the, uh, the educational state boards, um, uh, the national boards, uh, the the NGOs, uh, so all those basically has come come together, and this platform has enabled them to 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 collaborate and create a multiplied uh, effect. So this multimodal, multi-channel platform has helped uh, uh, created a countrywide ecosystem in our country. So India became the first country in the world to have a, a, a technology platform which has created such a, such ecosystem where all stakeholders could contribute, collaborate, and create those multiplying effect. Uh, today, 6,70,000 plus uh, titles 
um, are available uh, in this platform in accessible form, uh, uh, which includes, uh, uh, you know, standard one to standard 12, um, all uh, uh, the state boards uh, contain the undergraduate uh, uh, degree courses, masters, PhDs, um, along with that, uh, the, the competitive exams uh, uh, like banking, uh, the staff selections, even the, the, the CET for uh, uh, MBA admissions or uh, the civil ex IS exams. There are several success stories where um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the beneficiaries was clear uh, the, uh, the, the MBA exams, uh, entrance exams and got admission in IM, clear IS and you know, joined in, this, in the uh, civil services. Uh, uh, there are there are several novels um, and uh, you know fictions non fictions are available in this platform so uh, you know the 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 person with uh, visual challenge could pursue their hobby um, uh, reading uh, as an hobby and one uh, important capability uh, innovation which in one click conversion for any uh, 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 document uh, 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 traditional format to to an all four accessible format has helped uh, creating the the newspapers in real time so this platform has um, uh, nine newspapers and uh, the uh, the periodicals like India Today and India uh, Reader Digest are available in in real time, uh, which was you know the distant zim few years back. So this entire platform uh, has uh, has um, uh, uh, has has a backbone of uh, the the nationwide initiative called Sugame Pustakale, which is part of the the government of India's Prime Minister's program of accessible india campaign and and it has created a huge impact looking this impact um, we are now started working with um, uh, united nations wipo uh, the the global initiative called accessible book consortium to extend extend this platform to uh, to 60 plus uh, developing countries to create a similar impact so so these are uh, you know uh, some of those imp uh, you know initiatives uh, which has basically created very larger social impact there are several such initiatives are there which we feel proud to be part of absolutely these are you know moments of pride when you kind of talked about each one of them and the impact that you have created it's it's just fantastic so thank you so much for uh, sharing them uh, with us uh, our next question is for you, uh, Dr. Satish. Uh, so, uh, Satish, you talked about uh, you know defining accessibility, uh, with, which is not just about the physical accessibility, but you define accessibility in a broader term. So, you talked about the left and the right, and uh, a lot of other examples. So, could you give uh, some more examples in the way in which you have created uh, products and uh, the products which have impacted the community? Uh Actually, accessibility wise, I think these are the four or five uh, projects. But, you know, what I wanted to say here is, you know, for example, the shares are dignity and the star healer, the uh, Aksumai healer. Basically, uh, it includes all types of users. So you and me as well. You know, so I, I mean, everyone, uh, both the speakers and uh, panelists have also mentioned about inclusive design. So this is truly inclusive design, which is, I think, more humane. It's more empathetic and also relevant because it makes people with challenges feel different or excluded. They, you know, they feel that they're using the same products which you and me are using. So I think that is something which is very important. And I think in order to innovate in the accessible world, I think we have to be inclusive. I think Dr. Charu also mentioned it's not a single person's work. It is going to be a teamwork. And inclusivity is very, very important. I mean, simple things, uh, you know, which always we face. Let's have traveling to a, uh, a country which is where the, you drive on the other side, not we, we drive on the left side in India. So, you know, these are the kind of issues which have got created. I don't, these are all man-made issues, uh, which is very difficult to solve at this stage. But I don't know, in tomorrow's technology, something can happen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Satish, for that perspective. Now, uh, moving on to the next question, uh, the question is for you, Erica. So uh, we talked about the physical part of the world and gaming, if you see, it has both the physical and the digital component. And uh, can you share some insights on how uh, you're making gaming more accessible? 
Yeah, so the Xbox team is absolutely working on making gaming accessible for everyone. Um, one of the biggest innovations in the area is the Xbox Adaptive Controller. That was truly a, a game changer. This was really uh, an inclusive design uh, event and experience uh, of really understanding different customers and how how they use games and building out a controller that enables everyone to be able to experience gaming in the same way. Uh, the Xbox team is really focused in three different areas. Um, this is uh, the, the, the three pillars are the content creators or gaming developers, uh, the players, which the Xbox adoptive controller is a great feature and functionality for, and then the community. When it comes to creators and game developers, uh, Xbox has published the Xbox accessibility guidelines that make it more clear on what gaming develop, what are the requirements that gaming developers need to be creating against um, to make sure that uh, all games are as accessible as possible. And then also the gaming accessibility fundamentals course that aims to educate more people on what is gaming accessibility. Uh, for the players, uh, one of the latest and greatest features is having an accessibility tag so that when you're searching and browsing for the next game, you can uh, be able to find the game that uh, you would be able to enjoy the most. And then in the community, uh, there is a new Xbox Ambassador Explorer Path that really combines uh, gaming fundamentals and the community uh, along with an inclusive lens uh, to really help elevate uh, the games that are out there. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, I've also seen where games are now becoming more inclusive from a representation perspective. Uh, the content of the game itself is more inclusive. So uh, that's a fantastic, fantastic step uh, towards building a more accessible future uh, uh, together. So uh, th that's really fantastic. So uh, moving on to the next uh, uh, section, uh, Dr. Charu, uh, the question is for you. Uh, in terms of uh, the future of accessibility, so just fast forward 10, 20 years from now, how do you see the future becoming more accessible? Um, I think the way we are going to, to interact with technology is going to change in, in, in coming years. Uh, uh, we already see um, um, uh, uh, those changes are started happening. Uh, there are newer environments where the, the the services will get delivered, and the way we will be interacting with those those um, environments um, um, will um, uh, will be different. But where accessibility will be will be uh, um, will become uh, will play an important role. Those modalities which will be required uh, to, uh, to to interact with those environment like connected car, connected homes, where you basically will you know get all those services today, which you get on web and mobile. Um, the modalities will be required to interact with such environment are today's modalities uh, of person with disabilities. So 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 I strongly feel um, uh, uh, as a student of this this uh, this domain. Uh, that this this particular trend is going to um, uh, um, uh, to, to to define um, uh, the, the future technology. The yesterday's assistive technology um, uh, will be in today's uh, today's technology. For example, there are several uh, innovations um, are inspired um, with you know um, uh, with people with disabilities problems or the design considerations has been made for people with disabilities. Example. The ramps has been created for wheelchair-bound person in a physical environment. Today, it is an integral part of a physical environment where the ramps has been used more than the, the person with wheelchair-bound people. So, so the mainstream users are using those ramps more than wheelchair-bound. The audiobooks four decades back has been, has been created for assisting blind person in their education today. We see million dollar business uh, has been has been uh, built uh, 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 in the audiobook uh, 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 audiobooks book space. Spidget spinner, this this particular innovation, very powerful innovation, has inspired um, uh, to to solve, uh, inspired by the the challenge faced by uh, the person with attention disorder. Today, 
the entire industry is devoted devoted to this and we see this there are several such example even satish has given the the inhalers examples erica has talk about several such uh, you know features uh, which microsoft has built um, in in their products uh, which is uh, uh, today is in mainstream even microsoft has, has published one paper uh, uh, long back the 57% of the design concession which we do for people with disability has is helps um, uh, uh, enhancing the experience of uh, mainstream so so i very strongly feel that um, the uh, the the accessibility is going to play very important role especially when we see the newer technologies uh, the ai machine learning is already started uh, started playing important role the quantum computing 5g 6g um, the ar vr is 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 will going to disturb Uh, disturb the the, uh, uh, the the technologies and the 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 way uh, the the services will be will be delivered. If you apply this inclusive thinking, designing for limitations instead of instead of designing for for people with disability, design for those extreme limitations, you get a larger canvas to innovate, and that will basically redefine the and reimagine the 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 future services. So that is what. um as a student of this domain um, uh, and from the research uh, i feel that you know the future um, uh, will be and which will be driven by the underlying principle of uh, you know accessible and inclusive thinking second and most important thing is today accessibility is primarily driven by uh, the risk and compliance but start slowly now we started realizing the business value and most importantly the 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 the, the accessibility will be sustained by business when they will elevate the agenda from from compliance to sustainability five goals of you know today's out of 17 in sustainability are are directly related to uh, to 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 accessibility and inclusivity uh, the education um, uh, the uh, economic uh, uh, empowerment uh, uh, the smart cities equitable world and also the collaboration so so these five goals are directly related to sustainability so along with the 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 all the initiatives uh, on the environment and planet um, business will 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 adopt uh, the uh, the the accessibility and inclusion as as one of the the strategy for driving sustainability and that will change uh, and sustain this this entire initiative and we'll see that big change where you know the we will create the products and service services um, accessible by design and which will basically a big step forward towards creating inclusive world thank you thank you dr charu accessible by design is is uh, is the punch line and having uh, accessibility as default so fantastic view of the future and very very positive outlook towards the future and it's very inspiring uh over to you satish satish how do you view uh, the future of accessibility uh yeah uh, so basically i am a strong believer of technology and its ability to break barriers so on one side we work on very very high end technology like uh, drug delivery devices but we also believe to make very simple products which has no technology but basic science the basic physics in most of the projects which we work on and you know future of accessible design is through inclusion and universal design so universal design is something which we believe that will be a winner because it's for everyone and you know software and outwear that makes people products usable by everyone regardless of age ability circumstances it is also based on simple principle that designing for the widest range of people creates better designs and benefits everyone i think that's what we strongly believe in that you know we also don't believe you know in in our organization we don't believe something called india uh, product for india and product for export i mean it has to be the same quality it has to be the same design for everyone is what we believe in and we also need to you know as designers we need to research on accessibility and inclusive best practices we should also you know look at whether we can incorporate this in our design process itself from the you know word go when the project starts and i think uh, fundamentally adding technology definitely increases the functionality and increases the role of the for the products thank you satish i mean that's a very very interesting uh, perspective and 
imbibing all the principles up front and having that in the design itself. So that's that's very interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, over to you, uh, Erica, on your view on future of accessibility and, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, taking on to Satish's point on, you know, what are the key considerations that needs to be gone in when you are kind of designing some uh, some of the products uh, focusing on accessibility. So if you can uh, address both of them, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so I guess future of accessibility. Um, I, yeah, I, I do see, see them tying together. I, accessibility is automatic. Um, and there's, you know, maybe a few different ways to think about that. Um, so one is the shift left. How do we build uh, accessible and inclusive products from the ground up and absolutely um, starting as early as possible um, in, in designing uh, for the right um, experiences and, and for the right people. Um, that's the right way to go. Um, I think I talked about that a little bit earlier, of really like leaning into customer perspectives um, and the different ways that they're using the product. Um, also, a, a big part of shift left is on the development side. Um, and I think it's really there are a number of tools that are out there that I think is really important uh, for developers to be embedding into their workflow. Um, Microsoft has a tool called Accessibility Insights um, that can help to test for all of the accessibility standards. Um, it has a, a feature called the Fast Pass which can help to identify the most common accessibility issues in uh, five minutes, I think. Um, so this is just a great tool to check out if you're not familiar with it. Um, you can throw it, it's a plugin for Chrome and for Edge. Um, so you should install it, check it out. And uh, when you're building new products and experiences, this is a great way to quickly understand if there's any opportunities to build a better experience. And um, I, I guess along um, a similar line for the future of accessibility, I mentioned automatic. Um, what I really mean by automatic is you you really have to go out there and break it. Um, and I, I think it, a really great way about how accessibility beca can become more automatic is really through AI and the innovation that we really see accelerating out there <laughs> in the technology field. Um, one of the ways that I've seen accessibility becoming more automatic, um, for example, in the Edge browser, there is now automatic alt text. So it used to be up to developers to make sure that there is a good description of any any images. Um, there could could have been examples where this uh, either the description was not rich enough or perhaps. Um, that was lacking, and that would be a big gap in the experience. For example, with this new feature in Edge, if there, uh, it will provide an automatic description of images, and this makes it a lot. Uh, you you have to really work to break it, and like this experience is now embedded in products. Um, and I'm looking forward to more innovation around this um, to make all of the different elements of accessibility truly automatic. That's fantastic. Automatic accessibility. That's like really, really cool. So uh, thanks, Erica, for sharing that. And as we kind of near, uh, you know, near our time today, uh, I have like a quick rapid fire questions for each one of you. OK, and uh, we'll go with Erica first. Um, Erica, one dream. One dream. Uh, you can show. I guess I had a dream, you know, I I think it's really important for every company to have an accessibility mission statement so that everyone can drive towards common goals. Um, and there's kind of an equal understanding of um, of the direction. Cool. Uh, Dr. Charu, one dream in the accessibility context. Yeah, I want to see a day where um, anybody, a, a person with uh, from the mainstream or a person with disability goes to the market and, and, and get the, the product or solution or service of the shell, which it can be consumed without any adoptions. So, so, um, uh, so creating that equitable and inclusive world is 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 the dream which I am um, you know, looking at. Wow, that's that's fantastic. Uh, Satish, over to you. One dream. 
Yeah, so uh, extending from what uh, Dr. Charu was saying, I think, you know, to create a universal product, no adaptations required. I think that's something which is very, very important. But, uh, you know, it's also important that in order to achieve universal design, one must move away from this preconceived notion as to who the typical user is. I think that is something which we should try and avoid because it has to be, the product has to work for a very diverse audience. Awesome, awesome. Diverse audience. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the next qu quick question is uh, your biggest achievement in the accessibility space. Uh, Erica, you could go first. I, I would say it's about building a great accessibility community. Um, you know, that that's really only accelerating in momentum. And uh, I, I'm very excited to see what holds in the future. Absolutely, the community empowers, so absolutely great. And uh, Dr. Charu? It's very difficult to, 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 to talk about um, anyone, um, everything, what basically we, uh, I was involved or my team is involved or TCS involved, um, as all are special uh, for uh, special for us. Uh, uh, so I can say that any, any innovation which can, you know, uh, transform the life of person with disability, uh, so that is what you know. The, all the innovations which we have done, which has bring you know even a smile in the face of on the face of person with disability, is a great innovation. So that is what we consider as um, you know the the achievement. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, over to you, Satish. Yeah. So for us, it's I think uh, the shares are dignity deliver and the inhaler. But there's one product which is yet to be launched. Is we've actually created a product for as an ophthalmic uh, dispenser. So people with hand tremors, Parkinsonism should be able to put their own eye drops, you know, because if there's no caregiver. So that's something which we're working on right now. Oh, that's super cool. Uh, okay, the last question uh, is on any tool or solution uh, that you have come across, which you would consider path breaking in this space. So you could start with Erica. I think I've covered all mine. Um, uh, of course, there's more. I'd probably go with Seeing AI. I The Seeing AI app that I talked about, I think that's really a game changer. Absolutely, it is. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Charu? Um, we saw, saw so many um, uh, disruptive technologies like internet, uh, the mobile, which has basically has changed the life of everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, from the person of disability perspective, the assistive technologies which has been created for different disabilities are basically a game changer. So from my perspective, because I myself has, uh, 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 as, as, as facing a visual uh, um, a difficulty, the screen reader uh, has a, made a big difference in the life of blind person and who basically has started I, I never thought that you know blind person can read a print content or basically can work on computer use mobile uh, and all those all this has basically made possible because of uh, the, the the assistive technology called screen reader so i think uh, the the for blind person the screen reader and for other disabilities there are very specific assistive technologies are the technologies which i feel that is, are the game changer technologies Absolutely. For me, it's the spell check that really helped me to kind of get to a level playing field. <laughs> uh, Satish, over to you. I think for us, most of the project what we do is we try and get a smile on the user's face. I think uh, Dr. Charu also mentioned the same, but that that is something which is to our heart. And that's what we consider a successful product. That's, that's fantastic. Smile at the end, which is something which we all kind of uh, aim for. So thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, uh, for joining in. And thank you, uh, each one of the panelists, Erika, Dr. Charu, Satish, Madhumita, for such an insightful session. Uh, so hope this session opened up new possibilities for designing an accessible future for all. It gave you ideas. And we are really looking forward to building a better tomorrow together. So signing off for today, take care. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Signing off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.